They appear as nothing more than polished metal. Yet without them, the modern world would grind to a halt. Each year, global industry invests over $20 billion in these objects, the magnets that serve as the beating hearts for every motor, turbine, and electronic device. Behind their deceptively simple facade lies a sophisticated fusion of material science, metallurgical engineering, and precision on an atomic scale. The process begins with rare earth ores extracted from deep underground. From this raw material, a journey unfolds through dozens of complex stages, including purification, melting, the pressing of fine powders, and the intense heat of sintering, all before the final act of magnetization transforms inert metal into an invisible field of force. They are the invisible heart of our modern world, yet their pulse is controlled almost entirely from a single source. Today, China commands an unparalleled position in the rare earth magnet industry, responsible for over 90% of global refining and manufacturing. From the sprawling neodymium mines of Inner Mongolia to the advanced sintering facilities on its eastern shores, virtually every link in the magnet production chain resides within its borders. Beginning in 2025, a new government regulation will take effect, mandating that any exported product containing even a trace of Chinese-sourced rare earth material must first secure official authorization. This policy effectively places Western corporations in a position of dependence, compelling them to seek Chinese approval and sparking concerns about a powerful strategic lever in the high-tech supply chain. With this near-absolute control over such a foundational sector, a critical question emerges. What would become of electric vehicles, wind turbines, and the very fabric of American manufacturing if the flow of these essential magnets were to suddenly cease? It begins not in a lab, but in the fractured heart of a mountain. Here, a force that will shape our future is awakened from its ancient slumber. The journey starts deep beneath the Earth's surface, where veins of rare earth ore lie hidden within layers of rock. Geological engineers meticulously map these mineral deposits, drilling exploratory holes to pinpoint the richest concentrations of neodymium, iron, barium, or strontium. To free the ore, they employ precisely calculated detonations, engineering the explosive charges to keep the ore blocks intact. This method prevents fragmentation and preserves the integrity of the minerals inside, demanding a surgical accuracy that stands in stark contrast to the brute force of large-scale mining. Once the blasts have settled, the liberated ore blocks begin their journey to collection yards, carried by heavy-duty conveyor belts and specialized trucks. At the yards, they are carefully sorted into distinct piles based on their type, preparing them for the complex refining stages that lie ahead. Throughout this extraction, a hidden danger looms, as rare earth ores can contain traces of uranium or thorium. Dust and toxic gases are therefore strictly monitored and minimized, a constant precaution as these seemingly inert minerals are coaxed from the earth. After the ore blocks are transported to the factory, they first undergo a preliminary cleaning to wash away clay and other surface impurities. From there, the clean ore is fed into the grinding section where it enters either a ball mill or a jet mill. For rare earth ores, the grinding drum's rotation is held steady between 20 and 30 revolutions per minute, while a jet mill maintains compressed air pressure around 85 to 100 pounds per square inch. This relentless process continues for four to six hours until the material is reduced to particles averaging just three to 10 microns in size. During the entire milling operation, the internal temperature of the grinding chamber is under constant watch, never allowed to exceed 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This critical control prevents any alteration of the ore's delicate crystal structure or the loss of its natural magnetic properties. Once the grinding is complete, the resulting powder is cooled with an inert gas. It is then passed through a multi-layer screening system, which precisely separates the particles according to their size, ensuring only the finest dust moves forward. Now pulverized into a fine powder, the ore enters the next stage, flotation. This process is designed to separate the valuable rare earth particles from any remaining unwanted impurities. The powder is mixed with water and special reagents, creating a liquid emulsion. As air is pumped through this mixture, the desired particles cling to the rising bubbles and float to the surface, while heavier materials like rock and sand sink to the bottom. 
Through this elegant method, elements like neodymium, samarium, and iron oxide are carefully isolated, yielding a purified powder. Unlike the flotation of more common metal ores, this process requires an extraordinary level of precision. Both the froth on the surface and the slurry below must be managed with immense care, as rare earth ores have very low concentrations and are easily contaminated. The entire operation unfolds inside a sealed tank equipped with dust collectors and chemical control systems. These measures prevent the release of any harmful substances that might arise from the trace elements within the ore. Each batch typically runs for one to two hours, giving the valuable particles enough time to rise to the surface, their elemental purity intact. After the rare earth, iron, or oxide ores have been successfully floated and collected, the raw materials are prepared for alloy production. At this stage, engineers meticulously examine each batch, analyzing its purity, moisture content, and elemental ratios. For powerful rare earth magnets, they combine neodymium, iron, and boron in precise proportions. While for ferret magnets, the iron oxide powder is mixed with either barium or strontium. Every ingredient is weighed and measured with exacting accuracy, a critical step to ensure each finished magnet will possess a strong, stable magnetic force. Once mixed, these blends are transferred into sealed chambers, protected from contamination as they await the next transformation. In this world of elemental forces, the very air we breathe is a contaminant. To guard against it, the induction furnace chamber is first purged of all air, creating a vacuum before being flooded with inert argon gas. This protective atmosphere eliminates the oxygen and moisture that would otherwise destroy neodymium, an element acutely sensitive to oxidation. With the environment secured, raw materials like neodymium, iron, and boron are loaded into the furnace. The temperature then climbs to a staggering 2,500 to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. For the next two to four hours, the mixture is held at this intense heat, allowing the metals to surrender their solid forms and blend into a single uniform alloy. This duration is calculated with absolute precision, ensuring an ideal crystalline structure while preserving the rare elements within. Once the metals have completely liquefied, the molten alloy is subjected to a dramatic shock. It is poured onto a rapidly rotating drum, a technique that flash chills the liquid metal in a matter of seconds. This instantaneous cooling forces the alloy to solidify into thin, metallic flakes each possessing a fine and uniform crystal structure. From here, the alloy is refined further, shattered into an ultra-fine powder within another inert gas environment to prevent any exposure to air. The resulting substance is a dark gray powder with a subtle violet hue, its individual particles measuring only a few microns across. This magnetic dust is then poured into a high-pressure steel mold where it is simultaneously compressed and subjected to a powerful magnetic field reaching several Teslas. Under this immense, invisible force, millions of microscopic particles begin to rotate and align themselves in the same magnetic direction, like countless compass needles all snapping to a single pole. The entire process lasts only a few dozen seconds, yet it demands absolute control over pressure, magnetic intensity, and compression speed. Any fluctuation could disrupt the crystalline alignment, preventing the magnet from ever reaching its maximum pull strength. The result is a set of solid yet brittle blocks, their internal structure now perfectly oriented. These are the magnetic blanks, poised for the heat treatment that will unlock their true power. These freshly pressed alloy blocks are deceptive. Though they appear solid, they are as brittle as ceramics and possess no magnetic properties at all. To awaken them, they are placed inside a sealed furnace, once again completely isolated from the outside air. Inside the chamber, the temperature gradually rises to between 2,200 and 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, just hot enough for the surfaces of the powder particles to begin fusing together. For the next four to five hours, the system maintains this stable temperature, allowing the alloy particles to compact tightly and eliminate the tiniest voids between them. During this phase, the material transforms from a porous form into a fully dense solid, achieving nearly 100% of the density of the bulk metal. Once equilibrium is reached, the temperature is slowly reduced over several hours, degree by degree, 
giving the crystal structure time to lock in the previously aligned magnetic orientation. Finally, an additional heat treatment at around 950 degrees Fahrenheit stabilizes the entire structure, completing the sintering process. After the center blocks have hardened into dense solids, they are moved to machining and coating. Here, the blocks are cut, ground, and drilled with exacting precision using tools like diamond blades or laser systems to achieve the final specified design. Next, the magnets receive a protective coating of nickel, zinc, or epoxy. This metallic shield not only guards against corrosion and moisture, but is also critical for preserving the internal magnetic strength. Unlike ordinary metals, this layer is essential as neodymium iron boron is so prone to oxidation that its magnetic force would otherwise degrade rapidly, compromising both performance and longevity. Even now, machined and coated, the magnets remain completely inactive, showing no north or south poles. The magnetization stage is the violent spark that finally awakens their true power. Each magnet is placed between the poles of a pulse magnetizer, where an electrical current of 2,000 to 3,000 volts is discharged in just one to five milliseconds. This incredible surge of electricity generates an instantaneous magnetic field of up to five Teslas, a force tens of thousands of times stronger than that of the Earth itself. In that brief, intense moment, all the magnetic domains inside the alloy snap into perfect alignment, following the direction established during the molding process. This synchronization allows the magnet to achieve its maximum remanence and coercivity. If the pulse is too strong, it can distort the crystal structure. If too weak, some domains will remain disordered, causing a noticeable drop in magnetic strength. After this jolt of energy, each magnet's surface field is measured with a Hall sensor and its polarity is verified. Those that fail are demagnetized and reprocessed while the qualified magnets move on. The final steps are quality inspection and packaging. Each magnet is rigorously tested for strength, pole orientation, thermal resistance, and corrosion protection, ensuring every piece meets exacting technical standards. Specialized instruments allow engineers to immediately flag any magnet with uneven force or incorrect pole alignment. Next, the magnets are packaged with extreme care as their pull is now immensely powerful. Each piece is separated by non-magnetic shields or special plastic spacers to prevent them from snapping together and damaging their surfaces. The storage boxes themselves are built to withstand impacts during transportation, ensuring the products arrive at motor factories, wind turbine manufacturers, and robotics plants in perfect condition. Packaging also demands careful management of the magnetic fields so they do not interfere with nearby electronics and each magnet retains its full strength. Once inspection and packaging are complete, the finished products are ready to power modern technology, from electric vehicles and industrial robots to the massive turbines that harness the wind, where every magnet becomes an invisible yet powerful heart driving the entire system. An unseen force born of fire and pressure now pulses at the heart of our modern world. Once the magnets are complete, this invisible power becomes the lifeblood for countless devices and technologies that drive entire systems. In the electric vehicle industry, neodymium iron boron magnets are installed within motor rotors. There they generate a powerful magnetic field that allows for smooth operation, improved energy efficiency, and maximum performance on the road. High above, inside massive wind turbines, precisely oriented magnets are placed within the rotor to efficiently convert the force of the wind into electricity, delivering clean power to millions of homes. These magnets also serve as the beating heart of industrial robots and medical equipment. Their powerful magnetic fields ensure the precise motion needed for robotic arms assembling cars and for the detailed internal scans of magnetic resonance imaging machines. Even in everyday electronics like speakers, hard drives, and the tiny sensors inside smartphones, Magnets play a vital role, generating fields, converting energy, and directing signals with remarkable accuracy. They are mere fragments of metal, yet their silent strength moves the modern world. The path begins deep beneath the earth, where raw ore is unearthed and culminates in these objects of invisible force. It is this unseen energy that turns the rotors of electric motors, drives the immense blades of wind turbines, and animates the countless technologies woven into the fabric of our lives. 
From the initial extraction and grinding to the precise arts of molding, centering, and machining, each stage is guided by meticulous control. The process concludes with the critical moments of magnetization and the final scrutiny of quality testing. It is a testament to human ingenuity, a quiet confirmation that even the most unassuming components can possess extraordinary power.